Welcome to Francis Quilts, the site dedicated to the wonderful art of quilting, with a few other fun things thrown in as well. If you like what you see here, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you can be notified of future videos. Hey guys, welcome back to Francis Quilts. I am so excited because this is day one of the 12 ways to quilt a sawtooth star challenge. Before we go any further, if you haven't watched the introductory um, video, please be sure and check that out. It just gives you some basics, and that way I don't have to repeat everything every week for 12 weeks. Today, for the first block, we are going to be working with straight lines. Now, um, I'm going to be using a ruler because that's how I do my straight lines. You may not have a ruler. You may not be comfortable with a ruler. So what can you do? Let's give you some options first up. You can, number one, draw every one of those lines on and then quilt them. You can use a walking foot if you want to. You can use your free motion quilting foot and just practice uh, quilting straight lines and that's good practice. You have to slow down when you do it, but it's good practice for you. Or you can make those lines wavy. Instead of having them, them all straight, just have a little bit of gentle curve in them. If they're all done that way, then that's your statement choice. That's the way it's supposed to be done. It's not gonna look bad, it's not gonna, um, detract from the quilt at all. That's just going to be how it's quilted and that will be perfect. Now some of these designs in the next 12 weeks are going to be straight and some are going to be curvy. I wish I could tell you how many there were going to be in each side so that you could kind of plan where you quilt. I honestly just don't know at this point. Uh, I'll try to think about that some before next week. But for today I would just pick one of the blocks in that center row and do your quilting there. As you uh, watch the video you're going to see that there are a few mistakes but I kept going. I didn't stop. Only one time did I actually rip something out and you'll see that when it happens. And I want to encourage you to do that. If you have small mistakes, don't worry about them. Keep going with it. And I think in the end, in the long run, it's all going to work out great, but just keep working at it. Okay, let's head to the drawing board and let's uh, look at some drawings of this block that we're going to do and talk about some guidelines that we may need. And then we'll head to the machine. Okay. This is what I'm thinking about for the first block. As I mentioned earlier, it's going to be mostly straight lines, and I just want to think about some guidelines and some things that I need uh, to add to it just to help me quilt this easier. I think because of the size of the block and the size of the ruler that I'm going to be using that I need to draw some guidelines, and I'm going to do these not with a marker like this, but with a washout marker, but I think I will draw some guidelines here and here just to give me those lines that I can can match up to when I'm, when I'm quilting along. I probably will do the same thing out here in these corners and just draw in again with a washable marker. I'm just going to draw these guidelines in and all that's going to do is it's going to tell me where I need to stop when I'm doing uh, these, these lines that are meeting. And honestly, I'm probably just going to go ahead and do them here and here and here and here as well, just to, to, uh, just to, to give me clarity about where I'm going to be stopping and starting. That's my plan for all of the background. Now, in these stars, I have something else drawn here with some lines, but I'm really thinking I'm going to do something different. Angela Walters has a design that she calls a dot to dot, and I think I'm going to use that, and I actually may use it in almost all of the blocks just to have a little continuity. I'm still thinking about that, but I guess I should decide at some point, but we're going to start out with it anyway. What's going to happen when we get down to here, let me do this on a, a different one so you can actually see. When we're quilting down into this area, we're going to start at that point, and we're going to pick a dot so up here somewhere. It's not going to be um, uh, to the point here, so we're not quilting in the ditch, but we're just going to come from here to here. And by not quilting in the ditch, that's going to make it um, where you don't have to worry as much about hitting the ditch and being accurate with it. Then we're going to come to pick another point over here and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come over here and then we're going to come back to where we started. So the only point that you have to hit here is this one. And when we get there, we can go straight into the next one. Obviously, we'll quilt it rather than drawing it, but it'll be like that. So I think it'll kind of put these little butterfly designs in um, in the points as we go. So coming back to this one, the last thing that I have to think about is uh, the order that I want to do this quilting in. My goal, if I can, is to quilt the whole thing without having to break thread. Now, if I have to break thread, that's not the end of the world. But I need to do some thinking about it and see if I can come up with a way to quilt this with the fewest stops and starts. 
give me a minute. Okay, I've sat here and stared at it for a few minutes, and here's what I'm thinking. Now, this may change when I start quilting, but this is what I'm thinking. The no-brainer part is that all of these can be done and just following along, stitching in the ditch along the outside here and do the next ones. If I keep the next one where I can do come to here and I can do that and that and that and then down to here. Now, in this way I'm doing this, I'm not going to be outlining this entire block. If you want it outlined, uh, with um, in the ditch stitching, please go ahead and do that. And honestly, I may do that once I start, but for right now, it's not going to be. Now, the now problem, the problem is, is going to be how I'm going to get inside this inner portion after I've done these on the edges. What I may do is when I come up to one of these points, I may just use some stitching in the ditch to get into here. And then I can do those dot to dot patterns that I talked about. I probably going to come down here and do this one, this, this center design right there. Now, let me say, I, I know I can easily come out here and do these and come down here and do, do those and come back up here, but that's not going to get these two or three uh, areas that I'm going to have in here. I may just have to break thread to make those happen. Now, I could quilt these two lines, but I don't think I want to. I think I want to try it to see if I can do it without having any of those guidelines there. And in all honesty, there may be a lot more lines in this. When I when I get started doing this, I may have a lot more lines coming in here. I was just um, trying to, to get an idea of where I was going. Do you get the feeling that I don't really have a plan here? Well, I sort of have a plan. So I think it's time to head to the machine. Let's try this and see how it works. Well, here she is under the needle. Uh, I'm pleased with uh, these beautiful bright colors. It's going to be fun to work with. And um, I'm going to be, as I said, quilting with a ruler today on these straight lines. I'm using Angela Walters Slim. Um, I like it because it's it's narrow but but easy to hold. It fits my hand very well, and for me, it is a very good ruler to use for straight lines. I did do some basic measurements here, just along some of these lines, uh, just to give me an idea of how many passes I can do. I have decided I'm going to work these lines one half inch apart. Now that's going to be a lot of quilting, but let's face it, that's what we're here to do. Um, if I am pulling my hair out when I'm halfway through, then that may be an indication to you that you want to make your lines one inch apart. I have also decided that I'm going to start in the intersection here. I'm going to start by doing my dot to dot quilting first mainly because nothing has to touch there. And so I, that'll give me a chance just to, to kind of get a feel of what I'm doing. And we'll go forward. And if I make mistakes, you're going to see them. And we'll just keep going. So for my dot to dot, I'm going to start um, with my needle in that one position right there at the point. I'm going to pull my thread up to the top. I am using my ruler foot. If um, you have never used a ruler, make sure you're using the right foot and the right kind of ruler to do it. So I've gone back in here and I'm ready to go. I'm not planning on pulling these threads to the top and burying them or anything like that. So um, we're just going to take a few stitches close together when we first start out. So remember the first step is to go from that point to some point over here. I'm just going to pick an, an area somewhere right in here and then a quilt to there. And I forgot to do my little close stitches. I'll have to stitch over that when I get back over there. So I've stopped. My next one, I'm going to pick a point somewhere over here, and I'm going to quilt to there. And then finally, I'm going to come back in from this point, and my goal is to hit right at that point that I started with. Before I do that, let me clip these threads. Now, as I said, I forgot to make some little short stitches here, so let's just do a few little stitches up and back just to kind of secure those threads. Now I'm gonna go backwards. I'm gonna come from here, and I'm gonna to come to a point somewhere up there. Come across. And then 
back down to my point. Now look, that line is not completely straight, but it is certainly close enough. So now I am ready to start doing my square and a square sort of things that I'm doing here. Ooh, that might be interesting, do square and a square rather than, um, than radiating lines. We'll have to try that next time. So I want to get down here so that I can do my first line coming across this way. So I'm gonna stitch in the ditch along here. I'm gonna use my ruler because it just helps me to keep it, uh, keep it in line better. Okay, I'm to this point, and I'm going to stitch from here over to here. And then over to here. You have no idea how hard this is to do with the camera in the way. Now let's come up to this point. And then back down to here. Woohoo! Maybe we'll stop. Does that look good enough? I just had a momentary panic that I had just done the first thing wrong, but got my design and know it is right. So now let's keep going. I'm gonna come down, um, follow in this ditch for just a little bit. You know what? I'm not gonna worry about it half, uh, half an inch on these. I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit. When I get to a place that I like, I'm gonna bring it across. You know what? I'm gonna come back over here. So now uh, I'm going to be pretty close to half an inch, even, even if just eyeballing it. Um, I have my quarter inch marking on the line that I just stitched, and I'm going to bring it across. I'm going to stop at that edge. Now, those lines may not be perfect distance apart, but I'm just not going to worry about it. I could be very careful about it, and that would be fine, but I'm just going to let it go a little bit and not worry. So let's keep going. Let's see. While I'm here, though, I need to quilt these two uh, geese blocks. So let's bring it over. All right, now let's go back this way. You know what, I think I'm gonna do this without the, the ruler so I can see better. I'm about half an inch away from that line that I just did. Get it a little bit farther.
And did you see what I forgot to do? I forgot to do my two blocks down here. I'll have to pick those up at some point. Now you can see that's not perfect, but it's going to be okay. Let's come back over to here. All right, I think I'm going to go out to the edge. I'll come along here, half an inch-ish. And then I'm going to do my line from, let's go a little bit further, from here. And when I get to here, I'm going to stop. Oops, got a little bit off there. Uh, the best thing to do with this is to take a Fabrico marker that's purple and just put a little dot there and let's fix it that way.
Okay, I'm going to make a command decision right here. I'm going to come back in here and do these blocks that I forgot. And then I will come back down here and then I will start doing the inside. Oops, that started slipping. So I think I'm gonna take it out and take those stitches out and redo it. If it was not as bad, I would probably leave them, but I don't really like it. So I think I will take them out and fix that. Okay, I'm back. I've taken out those few stitches, pretty much took it all the way back uh, to this border. Um, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I normally would quilt from this other side, but it is just too awkward. So I'm just going to eyeball it and make it look as good as I can, and I'm going to quilt it that way. You notice that if I go a little bit too far, I just stitch back over it to get back to where I need to be.
been thinking about this intersection and there just really isn't any way to uh, to do it without having to break threads so that's all right it's not going to be that many times around so let's just start again take a few small stitches at the very beginning just to hold it in place here again. Take a few stitches and pull it. Just dawned on me, I'll show you that tip, tip or trick the next time I do this. Okay, I've taken a few stitches just to lock that in place, just backed over it. Let me show you an easy way to uh, clip your threads without having to pull everything out. Um, first thing you're gonna do is bring your needle up and pull it a fair ways away from you. You're gonna grab that top thread and you're gonna bring it back. And in that same hole, you're going to make one stitch down and back up again. Then when you pull, you see that the bobbin thread is coming up as well. So now you have one of the, the top threads and you have two of the bobbin threads. And you can just clip right there really close and that will um, free up the bobbin thread. So now you're ready to go in and start your next row. So when I, because that bobbin thread is now free, I can come in here and make my stitch down and back up and pull that up and the bobbin thread is free. It's great so that it means you don't have to keep working your way under the quilt every time. And I do believe we are through. Well, that was a lot of fun. Obviously, there were a few hiccups along the way, but we just kept going and worked with them, and I think the block looks amazing. Okay, let's get up close and personal with this block. As I mentioned, there are a few problems along the way. If you notice, some of these lines aren't particularly straight. Uh, I did obviously uh, stray over into my ditch or out of my ditch a couple of times. That was mostly early on. Once I decided to slow down and got over a little bit of my nervousness, I did better. Um, the one thing that I love about this design that I was not expecting is this circular movement that we get in here uh, from doing the dot to dot designs. I had not expected that and I think it just adds a little touch of something that lifts all of those uh, straight lines. Well, that's about it for today. I hope you enjoy doing your straight line block. If you decide to do something else, I would love to see your designs and see what you're coming up with as well. I'll see you next week.
Remember, if you like what you've seen, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Please check out my website and daily blog at francisquilts.com, and I can be found on Facebook and Instagram at Francis Quilts. Thanks so much for joining me. Hope to see you again soon.